Hey, I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally, and I hope you are having a fantastic day. Um, Jamie, I think you're probably not having such a great day, and I'm kind of wondering if, uh, since Hio barked, if the audio is doing weird things again, but there you go. So let's pop over to the group. Um, and let me do this. So I'll kind of answer the easy questions first. So May is, uh, not that this is particularly easy, so May had some consults with me. And um, so Spirit unfortunately has uh, had a few more seizures. Um, and the second and third were six and seven weeks late after each other. Um, so May, I'm not sure if that means he had a seizure six weeks later, had another seizure, and then seven weeks later had a third seizure. If that's the case, um, then that's not unreasonable. Uh, and in fact, we don't do, uh, we don't recommend using any anti-seizure medication other than p perhaps CBD at this point. Um, and so at this point, We've kind of talked back and forth, and, and unfortunately, May's veterinarian has said it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of over 500 bucks to get a thyroid panel tested as well as creatinine. Um, so, you know, what I would do is just, if, if, if finances are a concern, then what I would do is just do a quick BUN creatinine phosphorus check and just make sure that uh, really creatinine is staying the same. If it is not, then this is when I would look at other things. Um, if the seizures are happening more frequently though, then this is when it really does make sense to make sure that um, thyroid function is normal because that can certainly be a cause for, for seizures out of the blue. Um, and then Bettina's asking if you can give milk thistle with regular food and absolutely. So just make it easy, throw it in there. Um, there's a few supplements like Dinamarin that, um, that you are supposed to not give with food. And really, yes, and so May and Bettina, yeah, just put it all in um, with, the, with the food, just make it easy on yourselves. And, and then down to poor Willie. Yeah, so Jamie says she's certainly not the best, but hanging out okay. Um, so it's down to histiocytic sarcoma or lymphoma. And these neither one of these are good. Histiocytic heart sarcoma is kind of worse. Um, so there's a couple of different things you can try. And um, yeah, what a wonderful supportive group. Um, yeah, and then turmeric is a good option too. So what I would suggest doing, Jamie, is talk with your, I know you're going to an in integrative oncologist, and talk with them and see what options they are suggesting. If you had no other options, here is what I would tell you um, when you had you come into my office. We talked about going to keto diet, and I think that's important. Um, just to help make it so that Willie is not, uh, we're not, we're feeding Willie and not the cancer. Um, and then the second goal is going to be to reduce inflammation as much as possible, which you have been working on diligently and unfortunately not getting great results. If you're not using curcumin, I would try it. Golden paste is a good way to get in a relatively high dose um, and you, because it's mixed with, um, coconut oil and some black pepper often, that helps tremendously too. Now, as far as the actual cancer itself, there's a couple of options and it just sort of depends on what this is and if your on integrative oncologist can offer you some other options. And um, if it is lymphoma, there's actually a new drug out, but I, I suspect that that would really may not be avail eligible for it. That is. Um, but it's based more on um, getting, uh, uh, you know, working at the, at the genetic level to kind of get the, the cancer under control. Um, 
And then the other thing would be something called metronomic chemotherapy. And what that is, is using a relatively low dose uh, every day. And, uh, and the drugs involved generally include prednisone, which I think he may or may not be on, and then uh, cyclophosphamide. And I had been able to get dogs with lymphoma out 18 to 24 months using this and crock pet diet and a couple of other bits and pieces. And this is where you've got to really sort of choose what's best for Willie as far as supplements goes because there's a huge long list everybody can give you and I think you need to figure out, okay, this one has to really earn its place into Willie's diet. And then the other thing would be uh, CBD if you're not using that al already. And then lastly, THC. Um, so there were a series of lectures I watched, uh, and I think I've said this on a couple of different broadcasts, that Dr. Trina Haza did, and she is an integrative oncologist in L.A. And um, it, it's really interesting. So you would start at something like a half a milligram of THC um, and kind of gradually work things up as you needed. For Mona, it was, I mean, truly night and day. She felt so much better. Um, you know, and things were really great. Uh, and then, you know, and then it sort of stopped having an effect, and CBD seems to be doing as well for her as anything else. So Mona is sort of still hanging in there, but doing very less and less every day. But she's in a different place, too. I mean, she is, uh, she is 16 and a half, and, um, you know, basically all she's doing at this point is eating and, and sleeping. Um, you know, so eating is sort of the highlight of her day. But for Willie, I think a combination of those I concepts would be worthwhile. The, the other big plus about cyclophosphamide in particular is a metronomic chemotherapy is that it has very few side effects. And the main ones are going to be a decreased white blood cell count. I will tell you that I saw that in, say, 100 patients, I saw them in, in probably one. Uh, and the follow-up testing is relatively small, and all it is is doing a CBC to make sure that the white cell count is staying where it should be after two weeks, and then I would repeat that again in six weeks, and then we just kind of, kind of a you know adapt it based on the dosing, based on what's going on and the frequency more than anything else. It's also or at least it was five or six years ago, it was a fairly inexpensive medication versus chlorambucil was, had gotten hideously expensive for some reason. The one other potential side effect is that it can cause um, uh, hemorrhagic cystitis, which can be absolutely horrifying when your dog is peeing blood, but often that can be mitigated by using a dose of Lasix when you give the cyclophosphamide. And the cyclophosphamide, we would give anywhere from three days on to four days off to vice versa, four days on, three days off, every other day dosing, kind of whatever it was we needed to do to keep things under control. And um, then there's a couple of different Chinese herbal formulas we would use there as well, and standard processes, immune support. So, Jamie, I would suggest getting all the information you can at this point, um, and this is where because of the detailed nature, and may this is back to your question, um, because of the detailed nature of this sort of moving target, if you will, um, this is where a consultation may be, may be more useful. So, you know, if things are just not working for you and Spirit May, then that's when we need to get back on and have a conversation. If I can answer a question here and there, on iPets Ally, I'm happy to do so, and that's that's part of what this is for. But if things are like there's too many moving pieces, um, that's when it's time to do another consult, if that makes some sense for you. Um, so Jamie, I hope that is helpful. We really, I, I really, I, I feel you. That's just bad, bad news, and I'm sorry it took it's bad enough to get bad news, but it's also terrifying to know that you waited so long to get the news. So um, I hope this is going well and that Willie gets some help and gets to feeling better. So again, anything we can do to be of support, happy to do it. 
And then the one last question I've got is from Susan McPherson. And she says, it looks like she's going to be needing a, a good quality cold laser for the babies because Millie's getting her patella operated on. I guess she's got a luxating patella. And um, there's a couple that I've talked about. And then this is the one that Susan sent a link over to. And this one, I, I honestly, I have no idea. I mean, it's got a lot of, you're welcome, Jamie. It's got a lot of ratings on it. Um, and so that helps, you know, so again, take a look at the ratings on anything you look at Amazon and make sure it makes sense to you. So, you know, this person is like, wow, this really knocked it out of the park. Um, you know, and this one's an 18. So this makes me a little concerned, um, that, that there aren't good reviews since 2018. Um, and then... You know, so that one looks good, but again, it's in 2018. So what I would suggest doing is going over to the one star rating and see if it is more recent. Um, yeah, so boom, boom, boom. Here it is, something a little, you know, something a little bit more recent, and this doesn't look so great. Um, yeah, so. Here are the ones that I, so I hope that helps. It's like you got to look at what's working and not working and, and where the reviews are. So this is a product that Ilsa Dor had suggested and I think was using and getting quite, uh, quite good results. I'm not sure what their difference is between the human product and the veterinary product. Um, sometimes it's just changing the name of it, but that seemed to work well. And then the other one that I've used for quite some time is the Vetro Laser. And it is not as inexpensive, but it does work really well. And, and Dr. Kamen includes quite a bit of um, information in that packet. So I will put those links here for you. And um, that one there, and check that out. Uh, and that's all I've got for you this week. We just launched a cur uh, curcumin product, and Jamie, this may be a good option for you as well for Willie. Um, it, right now it is 15% off, and we're running a contest um, to uh, win you know, five or six free bottles. So there was an email that went out. We'll be sending that out again, so go check that out. So um, that's what I've got for you this week. Again, Jamie, so, so sorry. Do, do keep us posted and let us know how things are going, what suggestions you get. Um, we're, you know, we're so fortunate to be living in a time where we finally actually do have integrative oncologists that are like, well, this isn't working that great, so what can we actually do that will bring comfort to this pet? So here we go. Take good care. Uh, until next week. Give everybody a hug and a kiss, and um, I, hope, I hope we get some good news out of this really difficult time. Bye. Mm -hmm.